Okay, guys, so today we're going to do this major grade drawing. And there are a couple of things you need to know, even if you're confident in your inventor abilities. Um, this is what we call a reverse axis problem. See how it's facing, like what, what you would think would be the front view is really facing towards what's traditionally the right view. That's what we call reverse axis. So we are still going to make this piece here, the front view, even though if you followed the rules and you went by, if it's going to the left, it's the front view. If it's going to the right, it's the right view. On this one, we're going to turn the problem. We are allowed to do that. Um, and we're going to turn the problem and make our front view what really should be the front view because it has so much detail. And it looks like in real life, that's what would be facing you. Let's get on this. Okay, so let's get let's get going. I'm going to go new, standard IPT, create. Okay, if you get the weird box. And I'm going to go home. And as I look at this drawing, it's got this truncated circle. That means that big circle that has a diameter of three, but it's been sliced off in various spots. I'm going to draw that base part first. So I'm actually going to start on the top view. So I'm actually going to start on the top view. So I'm going to go origin, XZ, start 2D sketch. I'm going to zoom all because I'm way zoomed out. And I'm going to start by drawing a circle. I don't want you guys to put your circle in the center because what it's going to do is it's going to constrain it to the center and it's going to make your life difficult. So go ahead and draw somewhere that's not the center. Draw your circle. And we're going to dimension that circle. And like I said earlier, the diameter of this big circle that's been cut off is three. So it's a pretty big circle there. Okay, and then we're going to get them back on the screen. Now we have to figure out how this circle has been truncated. And it tells me that the width of the part is two. And see how it has a center line here? It's telling me that that is symmetrical. So we're going to do some serious geometric construction here. From the center of my circle, notice I get the green dot. I'm going to draw a line out. And then I'm going to hit escape. And I'm going to draw another line and I'm going to hit, make sure it's straight and I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to draw a third line down here. Now I am going to dimension from this line to this line, two inches, and it's going to want to do that, but I don't want it to do that. So then I'm going to go this line to this line, one inch, and see how it kind of moves everything back where it belongs. And if I did this right, from here to here should also be one inch and it should be a driven dimension. And it is, and I'm going to accept it just so that we can see it. I'm going to put everything back on the screen. And I'm going to use my friend extend. And we're going to extend these two lines. I don't need the center line because that was just there so that I could figure out how much I needed to manipulate it. And then I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard and I'm going to use trim and I'm going to trim this part of the circle and I'm going to trim this part of the circle. So I have that kind of flattened or the official word is truncated circle. Now I'm going to see if it'll let me trim this. It may not because it has dimensions on it. Oh, it did. Okay. And we're going to trim this guy that's sticking out down here at the bottom. Now this line in the center, I'm just going to press escape on my keyboard and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press delete. Okay. It's, you can trim both parts of it, but it's just faster to delete it because you just need to delete the whole thing. So this is the base of my, whatever the heck this thing is. And I'm going to hit finish sketch. I'm going to zoom up. Now, how thick is this piece? It tells me it's 0.875, which is seven eighths. So I'm going to go extrude 0.875, tell it OK. And here's the base of this thing, whatever it is. Okay. Now, let's take a look back at our drawing. We need to put this weird thing in the middle on top of it. 
Okay. But it's not seated exactly at the back and it's not seated exactly at the front. So there's something we can do and it's called using a work plane. And when you use a work plane, it allows you to draw on a surface that technically doesn't exist. So we know that the center of this tower part is dead center in this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to plane and I'm going to do mid plane between two planes. So I'm going to pick the front of this thing and I'm going to rotate it around and I'm going to pick the back and then I'm going to go back home. And now you see I have this. Okay, so now I have this thing called a work plane that's inside of my drawing because I'm actually going to draw inside of it. Work planes let you draw on surfaces that don't actually exist. So I'm going to click on start 2D sketch and I'm going to see how it highlights the work plane. Make sure you highlight your work plane. All right. And now when you look at it, I've got a sketch that's kind of on the inside of this thing. If you press F7 on your keyboard, it will actually take away part of it. So like you're actually technically drawing inside of it. So I'm going to click on front and I'm going to go project cut edges. And now you see I have that rectangle just like I did on all the other drawings because now I can reference the geometry that's inside of this thing. So now we have this tower and I'm going to use rectangle to draw the tower. And I'm just going to pick a point where it's touching and drag out a rectangle. Now looking at the dimensions here, the height of the tower to the center of the arc, and we're not going to worry about the arc just yet, is one and a half. So I'm going to dimension the height here as one and a half. And then I need to figure out the width. Well, to figure out the width, I need to look at my radius. My radius from here to the edge of the arc is 0.75. But I need the diameter because the arc goes across the whole thing. So if you double 0.75, you get one and a half. So I'm going to click on the line and I'm going to type in one and a half. Now, obviously mine is not even and it needs to be even. So this is where we have to do a little bit of math, guys. I know that the diameter of the circle that this thing is sitting on, even though I've cut part of the circle out at the longest part across it, which is here, is three. And then I know that from this part of the tower, this radius is 0.75. So the diameter across the whole tower is one and a half. So if I were to use my calculator and three minus 1.5 is 1.5. And now I need to divide it in half because I want it centered. So I have to divide it in half to figure out what the measurement on each side is going to be. Divide by 2, and it's going to be 0.75. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to go dimension. I'm going to click this line. I'm going to click this line, and I'm going to change it to 0.75. And notice now it kicks it over, and it's centered. You can check to make sure it's done right if you click this line and this line, and it should be 0.75 as well, and it should be a driven dimension, and it is, okay? So now we're gonna finish the sketch. Now, how do I extrude this so it goes in both directions? Because I don't want it going all the way to the back, and I don't want it going all the way to the front. You're gonna use extrude, you're gonna select the surface, and if you pick this guy right here, it's gonna do a symmetric extrude which means both sides are even. You can actually do an asymmetric extrude, which means like one side gets extruded more than the other, but we don't want that right now. We want symmetric extrude and the width of this thing is 0.75. So I'm gonna change this to 0.75. I'm gonna tell it okay, and I'm well on my way to making this part. Now, one thing about work planes, do not delete work planes ever. If you delete work planes, anything that you drew on that work plane goes away. So we are going to right click on the work plane over here in the browser. And if you turn off visibility, it goes away. It's still there. 
You can turn it back on if you need to reference it, but it is not something that you want to delete because if you delete it, everything that you drew on it goes bye-bye. So we're going to click on start 2D sketch. We're going to pick this surface and now we're going to draw that arc that we were missing. So you guys know you're going to do project cut edges. I'm going to go get my circle command and I know that this is already the right size. So if I get to the center, and I'm going to zoom up on it a little bit. If I get to the center, I'll get a green dot. If you click the green dot and then just drag it out to where it snaps to the edge, you don't even have to measure it. If you want to measure it, just to make sure, you can click on dimension, you can click on the arc, and it should be one and a half. And it's going to be a driven dimension because you've already defined it by geometry. You put it in the center, and then you went out to what would be the radius. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to trim away this piece of the circle because I don't need it. All right, let's go, whoops, let's go back to the front view. We're going to finish the sketch. We're going to extrude that, and we're going to extrude that back. So I'm going to pick this direction, and it's already at 0.75 because that's the size it needs to be, and I'm going to tell it OK. OK, so now we have our shape, and now we need to put the holes on it. So I'm going to do the hole in the front first. And I'm going to go to my front view and I'm going to go to my drawing and it tells me that the hole that's here is 0.625, which is 5 eighths. So I'm going to pick hole. I'm going to use concentric reference because it shares the same um, center as that arc. I'm going to change this to 0.625 and then I'm going to use concentric reference. So I'm going to click the red arrow and then I'm going to pick the arc. That guy is done. Okay. okay, so now to do the hole on the bottom, we're actually going to have to figure out how long this line is because we're not told. So if you go up here to inspect and you pick measure, you can click this line and it'll give you its measurement. So that is 2.236. So I'm going to open up my calculator and I'm going to 2.236 divided by 2 and I'm going to get 1.18 which is like almost one in th uh, three, six, 30 seconds. Um, so now I'm going to go to model. model. I'm back in whole. And looking at my drawing, the diameter is 0.375. And the center from the bottom is 0.437, which is like... Uh, so the diameter is 0.375. From the bottom, it is 0.437, and we just got the measurement from calculator for the left and the right. So here we go. We're going to click on the surface, 0.375 is your diameter. Click on reference, click this line, and we're going to put in 1.118. We're going to click the bottom line, and we're going to put in 0.437, and we're going to tell it apply. And there is that hole through the bottom of it. And now the last hole we have to draw is on this surface, which is fortunately not truly a curved surface, because if it was, we'd have to do another work plane. Um, because it's got enough of it on the flat surface, you don't need to do that. So I'm going to click on the uh, area that I want to draw it on. It is 0.25. It's 0.25. 375 over from the back of it, and it's 1.5 from the top. So change the diameter, 0.25. From this piece here, it's 1.5. And from this line to the center, it is, what did I say? 0.375. Okay. And here is this incredibly complicated drawing that you guys just did. You used your first work plane, which is amazing. And now we're going to go home. Make sure yours is facing this way. Um, 
because remember, although our example is facing the other way, we did a we did reverse axes and we drew what should be the front as the front. Okay. So now um, I'm going to pick a color for it. And we'll go with, oh, sky blue dark. That's pretty cool. Go home. I'm going to save it. Okay. And I'm going to go do my IDW. So file new, PLTWA. Practice is the project. Your name is your name. And this one is Inventor 51. Okay. Tell it OK on the box. You want your base. You want your top view. You want your right view. You want your isometric. And they are definitely not going to fit at one scale. So let's try 0.75. Tell it OK. Stretch these guys out a bit so they're not encro encroaching on each other's personal space. Double click on your isometric, make it shaded, um, and let's go do our center lines. So we're going to go to annotate. We're going to click the um, plus sign to do the ones that are circles and arcs first. Get the arc, get the bottom of the circle, get this circle, and then get this circle. And if you zoom up on them, you can see they're in the center. Sometimes the screen effect makes them look a little off center. Go ahead and click on center line bisector. Click this guy, these two lines here. Okay, click this line, and this line is going to be the same. Click this line, and this line, and this line, and this line to get the one that goes through. Um, over here, you're going to do this. And this center line will likely override it so it'll stick out like that. It's going to look a little weird because it's got a center line on the hole and then it's got a center line on the circle part um, on the, on the right-hand side view. So that is number 51. You guys just did your first work plane. Yay. So um, go ahead and save it. This one is a major grade. Save as. Let it save wherever it wants. Friends at home, I need you to export to PDF. Don't keep sending me inventor files, okay? Thank you so much, and I will see you next week.